Hello and welcome to today's LOL Esports Roundup where we're going to cover the last day of Worlds 2022 play-ins. Uh, we had our final best of fives to decide who would be the two seats going to Worlds main event in New York City in a couple days starting Friday. Um, down in the description you'll see three links, Twitter, Discord, YouTube membership, Twitter, follow me there, um, self-explanatory. Discord, join us, there's like mm, 300 of us probably now, I think we are in 300. Um, 300 of us BSing about the games as they go on. There's a space for activities channel where you can um, do predictions, pick um, as well as like a player pool thing that is available um, for the for the losers club. But that's an inside joke. You're not in the Discord. You don't know what that means. Um, and then uh, a tier list uh, channel that we just did if you want to post your tier list. Um, Lastly, YouTube memberships, $3 supports me. Get a badge in the comment section, I'd appreciate it. $10 supports me, and you also get extra content that includes videos after. Normally, the roundup um, will have today's games, today's news, and then what is to take place tomorrow. Sneak peek for the games, preview for the games. But because there is no games tomorrow, there is no members-only video today or tomorrow, well... Tomorrow there'll be a members only video. Um, no, there won't be Thursday, will be. Thursday will be because games are Friday. The day before the games occur, I do a video for members only where I predict who I think is gonna win. Um, I also do NFL American football content uh, a couple times a week on the members only tier as well. So, EG and MAD. Um, I'll be transparent. Uh, I had MAD winning this 3-2. Um, I was pretty tired. I. I honestly thought that Mad's um, series against Saigon Buffalo was going to give them an advantage because they had extra games. They finally got won a best of five. You know, that's a weight lifted off their shoulders. That's some, um, you know, they don't have to deal with the crap of people saying they can't win best of fives, right? Because Excel didn't win a best of five. Misfits didn't win a best of five. It's just, it's kind of silly, that whole best of five meme. And then, like, Vitality didn't even make the playoffs. So how are they even relevant if they can't make the playoffs to begin with? So it's just, it's it's a farce. Um, but uh, Mad didn't show up at all today. Unforgiven did. I thought, you know, they were banning his Draven in all play-ins. EG said, fine, we're going to leave it up. No, We'll leave it up and play your Draven. And he did well on it. I don't think he did awful. Um, he certainly was the best player on their team throughout this um, series, I thought. Um so, Jojo Pune, 11, 6, 16, 27% of EG's damage. Inspired, 7, 1, and 30, dominating El Yoya in the jungle. Niski, 4, 13, and 9, 31% of Mad's damage. Niski looked awful. Unforgiven, 6, 8, and 3. Um, the mid gap was massive. The top gap was massive. Inspired, really, really... Um, I mean, El Yoya played okay. I guess saying he played awful wouldn't wouldn't be accurate. He, he was he was okay, but Inspired won the first game by stealing Baron to end right, and um, also did very well in the other two games. Read El Yoya like a book, got ahead of him, and played very well. Um, you know the bot lane for EG handled Unforgiven and uh, Kaiser. I mean Kaiser didn't play his greatest series, but frankly I don't think Kaori did either. Or what, Kauri? Kauri got caught out a few times in on Varus in the Varus game. Um, getting in the middle of fights in weird areas. I mean, he had an Aphelio salt that was massive in one of the games. But it was like, wow, you are like in melee range. Like, you, your aggression here is, is noticed. I mean, you're playing with a lot of, uh, a lot of aggression, which is good. And, and also gets you caught out. But, um, EG dominated they dominated um pulling out a set mid for game two uh jojo pune beat up on niski i mean they gave the silas over and still won right um inspired on the sejuani played a great game um and, and great couple games and impact just had a i had an impact in top lane right um armut uh struggled a lot in this in this play and so that's without a doubt he has definitely been exposed a bit um and that really hurt mad but it's not all armut's fault 
I honestly, I mean, Armut played poorly, but these losses aren't all Armut's fault. Like Niski was 0 and 3 in what game three or something like just in the in the early game, like laning phase, like. That, that crap can't happen if you want to win games. If your back is against the wall, you cannot have that happen. And JoJo and Inspire just kept going mid lane, taking care of him. Um, bot lane, there were, weren't advantages for Mad Lions. It was just Mad had nothing going for them. And it was a shock. I mean, e, I had Mad winning 3-2. So seeing EG win, frankly, wouldn't have been a surprise to me if it was 3-2. You know, like, it'd be like, oh, well... I was close, you know, I figured this series would be close. But this is the complete opposite of what the majority of people thought would happen, which is EG just sweeping, you know, pulling the rug right from out of, uh, right right out from under Mad Lions and saying, forget it. You guys are out of here. Mad Lions become the only major region team to not get out of play-ins a second time. Um, so LEC can hold that L. Um and uh, hold it proudly anytime they crap on NA or whatever. It's just like, well, you, we've, your floor is lower than ours. Um, DFM and RNG. This, I had RNG winning 3-0. And I did say, um, after I said that, my predictions video for the, you know, 20 or so, 17 people that are members. Um, they know that I was like, oh, well, you know, I could see a 3-1. I was going, I went 3-0 officially, but um, I could see them giving game one. And it happened. DFM won game one. Um, I think RNG were not expecting that Yone pick out of Yaharung. And um, it it didn't work for them. Now in game two, RNG responded, went LeBlanc mid and offset that. Um, and, and the Yone was useless. So... The mid matchup then goes to what Silas LeBlanc or yeah Yaharung goes LeBlanc. He does not look good on it. And in game four, Yaharung pulls out Azir, but the game they're already lost. They're already lost. Um, Gala nineteen five twenty six twenty nine percent of damage for RNG. Jahu eighteen seven twenty six in mid. Silas the first two games was nasty. Evie ten eighteen nine or no Silas games one and game three. Um, Evie. 10, 18, and 9, 26% of damage. Utapon, 8, 12, and 10, 80 carry. Um, I mean, like I said, game one was close for a while. Honestly, I was like, why? This is the way that DF DFM were playing really slow. They were playing that LCK light style that I've, I, I've said multiple times. You can't play that way if you want to win. And they won with it. And I was like, oh, well, I'm wrong. They won with it. RNG did not win the team fights when they mattered. And DFM come out ahead. But then, RNG just say, fine. Now the, the, the scrim is out of the way. The warm-up's out of the way. And they just ran him right over. Um, Jahu, like I said, his Silas was nasty. He played very well. I thought Breathe struggled a bit with EV. That's why EV has 26% of damage. EV play, played a Trindamir in one game, um, which kind of tipped the scales a bit. But um, outside of that, I mean, it was pretty even. And slightly breathe favored but it was just like you would expect more out of breathe because they're about to go you know they're about to uh go to uh groups right actual worlds and not to say group d does not have great top laners when it comes to um you know uh carry potential i mean i don't expect i don't expect doran to solo kill uh breathe I really just don't. I don't think Doran has it in him. I don't think Someday has it in him, that's for sure. And I haven't seen enough um, rest to say one way or the other, but I'm going to assume he can't either. So, um, I mean, the test I don't think is going to come in groups. If RNG does have a test, it's going to come in quarters. Um, and then when it comes to jungle, I mean, Steel was just kind of there, going with the flow. Way, uh, Way played as Viego, I think twice. And did very well on it, which um, may make Viego come back in the meta a bit going into groups. We did see at the end, they went over it in the post game, that there's been 84 champions picked so far this year. Uh, record is 94 from 2019. So is Viego going to become part of the meta? I could see it um, with the jungle meta being so Maokai dominated. So it's like, okay, well, we're banning Maokai. Hecarim was expected to be a big pick, but actually Hecarim is... 
either boom or bust and when it's a bust it's awful so i don't think i mean there were a couple games today where it was the eg mad series it was up no one wanted it they're like i don't want the hecarim which is going to surprise a lot of people because going into it we thought hecarim was going to be a monster pick but from what i understand i mean eg and mad didn't prioritize it extremely high um and i don't think we saw it in dfm rng uh, mid lane, like I said, Jahu did very well on the side of this. Yahoo Rungs, Yone, solid um, in game one, but game two, they figured him out. Uh, his build path was, was sus. Uh, he got ahead in lane in game, in, in I think all four games eventually in CS. Um, but in the end, couldn't do enough to affect the game. Bot lane, Gala, and Ming definitely outclassed. Uh, Yudapan and Harp, that's without question. Um, Pulling out some different things. Gala had a Tristana twice, maybe. And Lucian, yeah, I think he had it twice. Lucian was game three. Um, so we had Lucian Nami. I think it was our first Lucian Nami of the tournament, which was uh, something I brought up today when EG went with a weird bot lane. Or went with a, a bot lane. Oh, they went with a Felios Braum. And I thought to myself, like, not here you pick Lucian Nami. Or bro, why is Lucian Nami so out of the meta all of a sudden and we know nami had a bug fix or whatever that caused the electrocute not to be as viable anymore and now you might have to go a different ruin or or you know take the l on some damage right um but that didn't affect lucian really and nami lucian's been lucian nami's been a thing for a long time right so uh it coming in today is something to note as well i think that that's something that we may see more of in groups uh, as things work out because Caitlyn is boom or bust not all these supports can huh. um, not all these supports are proving that they can play the Morgana or the Lux alongside it um, which is a concern because those champions are pretty easy to play but obviously a lot riskier for pro play but that's it for the roundup for today we only had two series to go over uh, down in the description, like I said, you're going to see a Twitter link, a Discord link, YouTube memberships. Please do all three of those. It would re I'd really appreciate it. But if you don't want to, just subscribe to the channel. Like the video if you like it. Tomorrow's video, I don't have a roundup. I'm going to be going over my opinions of the teams that are dropped out. Uh, my takeaways from play-ins. What the lasting impact will be from the teams that lost. Um, Thursday, we're going to have the roundup, but it will be a sneak peek which will be the games for Thursday, I mean Friday. So Thursday's video will be a preview of the Friday slate and schedule. Uh, so that'll all be the next couple days. Thank you for watching, and I hope you come back for more content.